All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily for the 14th of April, 2024. Flyers Daily presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. Whatever happened with the Flyers in New York has brought back a lot of the traits of their game that they had for most of this season. Games on the razor's edge. No margin for error. That was the game last night against the New Jersey Devils, where they win it in a one nothing game. Sam Harrison gets his fourth shutout of the season, fifth of his career. He makes 20 saves on 20 shots, and Flyers grab two points and are really hoping for a little bit of help from some other teams around the NHL and find a way to make Tuesday night a game that is for all the marbles. Now, some teams, like the Penguins, won't play until Wednesday, so you may not know until then, but the Flyers took care of their end of the business and got that one nothing win. Star-studded episode, by the way, real quick. Uh, the lone goal scorer in the game was Travis Konechny, a shorthanded goal, which leads the NHL. And he's going to join us in just a moment to talk about the game. And also, it was Wayne Simmons' retirement night. How about Simmer is on the show? Uh, he'll drop by for a very fun conversation as well. Flyers out shoot the Devils, though, 21-20. to Flyers only took one penalty in the game. And once again, their structure was excellent in this game, like it was against the Rangers. It all starts in the neutral zone. Flyers denied entries for the Devils all night. And when they did enter, they didn't enter with flow. So Flyers did a really good job protecting the middle of the ice in the D zone as well. The structure in the neutral zone is what predicates their rush game uh, and transition offense. Now, there's not a lot of offense in this game. There's only one goal, uh, but a really good job and only one penalty. Cam Atkinson was penalized. He's about 200 feet from his net when it happened. Uh, but other than that, no penalties. So that tells you the team is positionally sound as well, not reaching in with sticks, getting hooks or trips or slashes, chasing plays. They were on it all night. I thought they played really well defensively. Nick Sealer in particular, you could tell in the beginning, in the first period, that he was going to make it his, do his part and punish the opposition. Four good hits in the first period, drew a penalty on one of them. Flyers had a 5-on-3 in the first, couldn't have looked worse. The 5-on-3 was not good. I think they ended up with three shots on goal, but nothing, nothing really substantial that you would deem a huge threat. But you get out of the first period, and it's scoreless. And then in the second period, the Flyers, at 10.50, get the only goal of the game when there's a little bit of risk involved in this play, but a loose puck kind of comes into the middle in the top of the slot around the top of the circle. Scott Lawton kind of looks at it and goes. Now, he leaks, and he admitted to me after the second period when I had him on for the off-ice interview that – he cheated it a little bit, <laughs> and he did. If you watch the play again, you'll see he cheated. And Nick Sealer originally thought maybe Lawton was going to get that puck, and then he realized, oh, no, Lawton's going. So Sealer had to jump on the case, and he makes a kind of a one-knee-down lunge at the puck and lunges it perfectly to Scott Lawton, and Lawton knew that Travis Konechny was on the jump. Konechny gets out on the rush. Lawton chips a pass ahead to Konechny. He goes in all alone. He's got about three lengths on the closest devil defender, and he goes in and just beats Kokkinen. Right-handed shot, head up, and just beats him. Just over the pad on his glove hand side, perfect shot, and the Flyers score yet another shorthanded goal. Scott Lawton and Nick Sealer get the assist. Flyers go up one nothing, and they made it stand. You know, Sam Harrison didn't have a ton of work in the game. He only had 11 shots against through two periods, 20 total in the game, but he did his job. Made some big saves, and for a team that predicated itself during the successful parts of the season, really most of the season, they've been a transition offense, a team that kills penalties and can get shorthanded opportunities and goals. Obviously, they lead the league, 16 of them. And a team that denies you zone entry with their neutral zone structure and keeps you to the outside, limits your shots, and protects the middle in the D zone. That's exactly what they did. Now, over that eight-game stretch where they went 0-8-2 and or 0-6-2, and you know, they were a team that was not denying entries, was 
giving up the zone too easy, was getting hemmed in, was not protecting the middle, was not getting saves, was not killing penalties, was not getting shorthanded chances, was not transitioning off the rush, not getting rush opportunities, and not scoring enough goals. And then all of a sudden in New York, they score four goals off the rush, and they did all of those things that were their hallmarks to success. And then they did it again last night against the New Jersey Devils. Now, the offense was not, you know, potent for the Flyers last night. I didn't think Kockenham was particularly busy. There was only 41 total shots in the game. Flyers only had 21. But they did what they needed to do against the New Jersey Devils, and they come away with the two points. And that's all that matters. But after the game, I had a chance to catch up with the goal scorer. Shorthanded goal leads the NHL. It's Travis Konechny postgame. Whatever you found in New York, you brought it here again tonight. Uh, penalty kill goal, you get to the shorty. How good does this feel right now? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's awesome. Um, I'm sure we're gonna right to our phones here and, and see uh, the luck that we got tonight. Hopefully, and uh, just just keep battling, control what we can control, and look forward to the next one. And you got to take that same mentality into the game on Tuesday, provided the, the situation warrants. But yeah. what what you guys are playing so much better and faster in transition again? Is it all stemmed from the neutral zone play? Uh, yeah, I think it's just we're staying a little closer, staying tighter, playing together, and it's really helping us. D are standing up, and uh, Fords are coming back hard. So, um, you know, we do that, and then we give Urs, uh, you know, a chance to stand on his head when he needs to, and, it, you know, that's that's the formula we're looking for. TK, staying tighter, the, maybe the most important area to stay tight is that room, oh, yeah. and it's clearly come back. It's come together, and you've had to lean on that. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying it all year. There's going to be ups and downs. Um Nobody turned on each other. Nobody turned on each other. I think that it's it's been uh, a good experience for everybody. We've all learned through uh, the ups and downs, and you know it's been a while since you know this team's been a, a fun position like this, and you know we just uh, got to embrace the moment and do what we can do. TK, go celebrate with your teammates. Thanks Thank for doing you. it. Appreciate it. Great to sit down with Travis Connecting. You could see the body language if you're watching this on the YouTube video of Travis when I asked him about the group staying together, and he was very animated. And jumped at that question as soon as I asked it. Um, that group in that locker room stayed together, didn't point fingers, didn't turn on each other. And even though they were playing some pretty bad hockey and getting bad results, ugly results, uh, they stayed together. That's a good sign. That means something. That you can go through something like that at this time of year and that group is so together that they don't start pointing the finger and playing the blame game and tearing that part of it apart. Now, one of the guys in his Flyers career that was a great locker room guy, just a, a consummate professional, played the game by his rules, was tough, but didn't fight all the time, fought when he needed to, in particular to protect a teammate. He was a guy that was unafraid to go to the blue paint, get punished for doing it, but score 30 goals in a season and be a power play presence. He was a great guy to deal with as a media member or content creator, whatever you want to call it. Never said no. And whenever you asked him anything, he gave you honesty. He played the game with honesty as well. He was celebrated last night after signing his one-day contract with the Flyers and honored to sign it and retire as a Philadelphia Flyers after 543 games in the Flyers, or 573 games in a Flyers jersey. I had a chance to catch up with Wayne Simmons before the game, and here's that conversation. It is Flyers Daily, and I'm so happy to be talking to this guy. You all know who he is. It is the one and only, it's the Wayne Train. Simmons, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. How's this uh, kind of whirlwind process been, coming back, signing the one, you know, one day deal to retire as a Flyer? I'm sure it's a mobile, but yeah. a lot of fun, too, with the kids. Yeah, it's been unbelievable. A little bit overwhelming um, at times, but it's very special. Um, when I was here, I had no kids. I was married with my wife. My wife was... You were a kid. Well, well yeah, exactly, right? I kind of grew up from a, a boy to a man in the city, so it was extremely special, I think, for me to be able to bring um, my children back here and kind of show them, you know, where I started. It's It's been very special. Um, you know, I got three kids now, and... You know, my, my oldest daughter knows me as a Maple Leaf, but not after this weekend. So I'm very excited about that. How did this all come about, of this process of, 
you know, signing the one day deal and, and being able to retire as a player. I know that you were still playing and, you know, you weren't sure when you were going to hang it up, but now it's official. Yeah. Um, kind of just reached out, you know, to my agent and, um, you know, as soon as he did that, it was like 30 seconds. And what's we, your initial reaction? Yeah, yeah, um, honored. Extre- yeah. I was extremely honored, um, you know, to even thought of to, you know, sign a one day contract to retire as a flyer. You know, I, I think, you know, a lot of guys play this game and, um, you know, when they retire, you know, you just kind of just, you're just done, right? And then for me, um, you know, I, I I put a lot into it in, in Philadelphia and obviously my whole career as well. But, you know, I, I felt very appreciated, you know, by the organization and, um, you know, just a lot. I know the fans appreciate it as well. When you get sent here kind of after three years in the NHL and the Kings organization, you couldn't be further away. You're all out on the West Coast. What was your initial reaction to coming here knowing kind of the DNA of this franchise and the fan base? I think um, getting traded – Initially, you know, I, I was upset, but once I realized it was to the Flyers, I was excited, extremely excited. Um, you know, growing up, you know, I used to watch, you know, the Red Wings and the Flyers all the time. Those were two of my two favorite teams, actually. And um, I just remember, you know, the style of game that the Flyers played, and um, it was it was meant for me, like Taylor Taylor made, right? And you know, the aggression, you know, just the big physical, fast hockey, and. Um, you know, I think to be a part of that and even to be um, wanted, you know, by an organization like this, you know, gave me extreme hope and, um, you know, everything worked out great. It, it quickly turns from one organization feeling like rejecting yeah. you to the other one wanting exactly. you. Exactly. I think that that was my initial thing. That's why I said I was upset. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, they don't want me anymore. But then you realize, well, this organization wanted you so bad that, you know, you got traded for their captain. And I think you got to sit there and you got to look at that because Mike Richards was it, unbelievable player and he was actually one of my favorite players growing up i remember watching him play so um to to be in a trade like that for me it was you know special as well um you know because like you, like you said um I, I knew the flyers wanting yeah it's a bit humbling in a way yeah. um w- when you look at some of the relationships you have this relationship with the fan base mm-hmm. they just respected the way you played whether it was taking a beating in front on power providing at front or physicality and toughness talk about the relation you had with the fans yeah the fans are the best you're not going to find a better fan than you know a philadelphia flyer fan on the nhl me um it's just the appreciation the love all they wanted to do is play hard all you had to do is play hard you didn't have to score goals didn't have to do anything you just you played hard you pour your heart out and you know they respect you and they love you they show it um so for me I, it was perfect for me. You know, I came in here and that's what I did. Like that was the name of my game, right? Like, I worked my butt off no matter what, whether we were up. You played five, honest. Whether we were up five goals or down five goals to the last second in the game. You know, I always played as hard as I could. And, you know, the fan base really appreciated that. And, you know, I, I could really feel that. And I think that's one of the a big reasons why um, we're sitting here today. You know, the, you have the relationship with the fan base, but you said you grew up here. Now you have three kids. You had a lot of teammates yeah. along the way that I'm sure are forever bonded with you. Yeah. Talk about those guys that you spilled it so many times with. Yeah, um, you know, played a lot of years with a lot of guys here, you know, obviously Claude Giroux, um, you know, Jake Vorchak, Boots, um, lots, Scotty Hartnell, Kim Timonen, Danny B. Um, you know, that's just to name a few. Um, you know, those are guys that, you know, I still keep in contact to, with till this day and, you know, are very, you know, important people to me. Um, you know, not only, you know, did, you know, they helped me mature as a man, but you, we went to war together. So, um, you know, very, a very, I share a special bond with those guys and a very special bond with this city and it will never change. Um, you played over a thousand games in the league. Do you look back on that now that you're officially retired and go, I made it to a thousand. That is not easy. Uh, it's actually crazy. Um, for me to even make the NHL was was mind blowing. So to get to a thousand is extremely special. My parents did a lot for me, and you know I appreciate that. Five hundred five hundred eighty seven games as the Flyer. When you look back, is there any particular moment that you're somebody cutting the tension in the room or ready for a game or anything in particular as one of those elite high moments that you recall? Uh, nothing in particular. We had a we had a bunch of goofs when I was here. So we always played jokes on each other. We were all practical jokers. Everybody was messing with everybody. So, um, you know, we, we kept it light. We had a lot of fun, but we worked hard. So it was, it was extremely enjoyable. Uh, your last game was the Stadium Series game yep. against Pittsburgh. And I, I, we all knew it was your last game. You did certainly as yep. well. How was it kind of keeping your emotions in check for that, knowing that you were about to be dealt? 
it was hard. Um, but at the same time, it was, you know, I wanted to go out there and, and give everything I had. And you, like, like, you, you stirred it up. Yeah, I wanted to go out like I came in, right? So um, if I was going to go out, I was going to go out with a bang, and, and I did. Um, you know, that was a game. We came back. We won. Um, and, you know, my wife was there, obviously. Uh, my wife was pregnant at the time, and I had a couple friends here, too. So it was um, an extremely special game for me. And then, obviously, receiving the helmet at the end of the game. I know I teared up there. Uh, probably tearing up a little bit now, but... Um, I don't know. It was, it was just a really cool situation, but it, at the same time, it, it sucked. You know, I never wanted to be you know, on another team after I became a flyer, but unfortunately, that was just a business of hockey. Yeah, that's the reality. I think one of the true testaments of you, too, is how every media member thanked you for the way you conducted yourself off the ice as well. Just the gentleman. What's next for Wayne Simmons post-hockey? It, what what What's the band, big plan? Uh, no big plan. Hopefully, you know, I can become, you know, a member of the Flyers again. You know, I think that would be something that I'd, I'd definitely be interested in. But um, for now, right now, I'm just stay-at-home dad, taking care of my kids and uh, trying to help out my wife. Trying to get back on the road, aren't you? So you get a little sleep? Uh, yeah. <laughs> sleep, there's no sleep in the house. No. <laughs> no, sleep is very few and far between. But um, um, it's, it's been good, yeah. Will Wayne Simmons be popping up in beer leagues? I always say all road lead to beer league. I don't know. Honest to God. Um, I've had a couple of buddies ask me to play, and I'm just like, eh, yeah, you're getting recruited. Not, yeah, not right now. It's actually pretty funny. It's um, a couple of my buddies play over the old uh, Maple Leaf. Uh, well, it's, it's Ryerson now University, but it used to be Maple Leaf Gardens. So um, they got a pretty good men's league over there. Maybe I'll pop up there. Who knows? Yeah, a little bit of history in that building. Yeah, exactly. um, Wayne, on behalf of everybody for the years, thanks for the way you carried yourself. You were just such a pleasure to cover. I mean, so many times in this room, off ice interviews, you were always available and honest and you know we really appreciate that best with whatever's next to you and your family thanks for doing this thank you i appreciate it wayne said there about what he wanted to do post hockey playing that he'd like to be a part of the flyers organization i think he would be a great addition to this flyers organization and he knows the right people so wayne simmons consummate professional congrats wayne on a great career you played over a thousand games and you played a lot here in Philadelphia, and you spilled it. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time last night, and I appreciate you taking the time all throughout your career here in Philadelphia. Whenever I asked, Wayne said yes. So thanks to Wayne Simmons, and thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. It'll be a brand-new episode, Mondays with Meltzer. We'll look at the Flyers' caps, the playoff picture, and more. So join us then on a brand-new Flyers Daily.